today, today, today at 5 p.m., we are going to divide. All of us, me, you, all of us. Not just the kids, but the teenagers, the young at heart, the young in spirit, all of us. Everyone is welcome. Meet us today at 5 p.m. at the 5. We're going to jump. We're going to jump, 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 jump around. We're going to jump. My knees, Lord. Just suck Y'all my knees, in? God. Yes. Today at 5 o'clock. So Defy is the Old Cloud Nine. For anyone who may be a little bit confused, it's located in the Greenbrier area. We're going to be there at 5 o'clock. Now, some of y'all didn't register yet, but it's okay. It's okay. We have a few spots left, and we just want you there. We want to spend time with you. We want to jump around and have some fun. So meet us there today at 5 p.m. And that's not it. That's not it, y'all. So we've been on tour. We've been going on tour. Half sure. been on tour. I've been on tour. And we miss you guys. We want to see you so, so badly. So for those of you who have not made it to our tour, we have one more tour day. Everybody say one more. One, one more. more. One more. One, just one more. One more. July 24th. Mark your calendars now. 11 a.m. at Greenbrier Mall. So while you're there shopping, stop in the food court, meet us. We can't wait to see you. We just want to say hi. I want to introduce myself. And I, I just want to see you. I just want to see. But I'm done. That's it. Just come on. Really? <laughs> Listen, I'm coming. I'm coming to both. Oh, yes. You ready to jump? I'm, I'm coming to eat. Uh, I'm a, I'm a like, I'm a jog, like walk, maybe like try. I think I'm a try. I'm a try. Can we gallop? You know, my, oh. the way my knees are things, I don't, but I, I mean. Listen. The way your knees set up. These can't be the same knees that was taken over for the 99 two thousand. Oh, oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's good. Good. I'm coming. I'm coming, though. Hope. Yeah. What's going on? So, listen, I know we got Defy. We define gravity and all that good stuff this Sunday. But uh, coming the next few Sundays in August, we're excited. We're officially launching our Welcome Back. Welcome back, welcome back. We're gonna be back in August. Listen, we're gonna be in the physical space every Sunday in the month of August. And not just once, but twice have I told thee. We're coming together at 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. We're gonna converge to physical, not digital, physical space. But we will stream online as well. For those who are not able to make it to the physical building, not only are we coming together to worship God in a space together, but we're going to have a block party immediately following our 1130 a.m. service. And listen unto me, anything that Shekinah Kingdom does, we do it. Not only do we do it as unto the Lord, but we're going to do it well. So it's going to have music, a gaming station. Uh, I, I, I heard they're playing spades. <laughs> now listen, y'all. <laughs> Just be kind and remember the Lord Jesus is in your heart when you're playing the spades, okay? Because right. it's, you know, renege. Don't renege. Associated with revelations. Yeah. It's renege. So we're not going to be biblical. Yeah. Play the game or get yeah. up from the table. Amen. Get up. <laughs> Leave your Baptist words at home. Leave them. So we're going to have spades. For those of us who don't play with spades, we'll have a mean game of Uno. And we're gonna have the partially closest phase called Phase Ten. Uh-huh. That's the that's the you know the the PG rated version of Phase is Phase Ten. Uh, like I said, a gaming station. It's gonna be food galore. I've heard I've heard basketball. I've even heard that it's gonna be some water fun. There's an yeah. elder who I'm not gonna say his name, but there's an elder in our church who has already threatened to bring their water gun and their balloons. So I'm just saying, look, make sure you're there. August, we're kicking the doors open. We are coming together in space. We're going to celebrate that with a block party immediately following our 1130 a.m. service. Make sure you register. You have to get your registration in for the block party, okay? Even if you don't attend the morning services, you can still come together with us with our block party. So make sure you register. And before I go, we have all... Oh, we have, I got excited much. Okay. We oh, have already okay. sold, not sold, but we have already had 100 tickets to move. Amazing. And we've been live for roughly eight or nine days with this. So mm-hmm. over 100 tickets have moved. So you, please, ma'am, please, sir, please, uh, little lady, ma'am, and, and little brother, sir, please make sure that you get your tickets today. That is absolutely amazing. I believe you yeah. can actually go to the website. Yes. To www.placeofchange.org. Please, please, please 
go to the website. While you are on the website, you will see also our Go campaign. Yes, it is still absolutely happening. Please, please, please click on that tab. We all know already you know, exactly the details of the Go campaign. If you're not exactly sure, click on that link. We want you to, to donate and and give your seed to the ministry. We know we have absolutely, absolutely mm -hmm. amazing churches. Yeah. And we want you, yeah. in the words of Pastor, we want you to feed what's feeding you. Yeah. So please, please, please go check out the Go campaign. While you're on the website, while you're on the World Wide Web, <laughs> please, please, please go follow us on our social media pages, mm -hmm. our Facebook, Shekinah Kingdom Church, our YouTube, Place of Change VA, our Instagram, Place of Change. We're everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> if MySpace was still a thing, we would have a MySpace too. What? <laughs> but please, please, please go follow, go like, go subscribe, go send the page to everybody that you know. Send them to a, to your friends, your cousins, all that good stuff. Hey, follow my church. We have some amazing things happening right now and some amazing things happening in the near future. And we want you to be made aware at all times. So please, please, please go do that. If for some reason today you have a prayer request, yeah. we want to make sure that we honor that as well. Once again, you can do that absolutely on the website as well. Please, please, please just go there, click prayer request. Let us know what we can be interceding uh, with you for. And last but not least, we want to be in the know, like I said, mm -hmm. at all times. If you are not already, please, please, please text SGI to 71441 so that you can be all in the know, all right? <laughs> And same number, 71441. If you decide that you want to make a spiritual decision, you can do that today. All you have to do is text SKC decision to 71441. We're making it so easy for you. <laughs> what more can we do? We have laid the all of it. Open up the way. Open up the way. One more. One more. One more. <laughs> Do. Listen, we're about to get out of here, y'all. I'm going to kick it over to Janae. She's going to introduce our amazing, amazing pastor. Janae, it's on you. Listen, I know y'all are ready for worship, so we are not going to hold you any longer. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Put your hands together, open up your mouth, and help us welcome none other, none other than V. 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 Pastor Cedric Rouse. Thanks, guys. Good morning and happy Sunday to you. I'm Pastor Sid right here at the Place of Change, and I am ready to go into the presence of the Lord and to bless God today. Today is a special day, and these are special times in the life of our church because of our transition to open our doors, to have our family back in our sacred space here at the Place of Change. And today is our last soft opening, as you have already heard and we are excited about what God is going to be doing in just a few weeks when we open our doors on first Sunday. And not just once, but twice a Sunday, 9.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m., we will make available to those who register. Now, yes, for now, it's registration. And for now, we'll keep doing Mass for just a little bit longer. Um, however, I'm excited about the opportunity to worship. Now, having said that, for those of you who choose to stay in virtual space, we are here for you. That is nothing wrong with that. Um, we are ready to minister to you and to give you Jesus with the same, if not even more quality that we have tried to give you this entire pandemic. All right. Now, I have one time that I'm going to ask you to break that rule for those who are more comfortable in virtual space. I want you to come out the first Sunday in August in the afternoon following our second service around 1, 1 30 because we're gonna be having our block party. You've already heard it being talked about. And so I don't have to go in uh, extensive detail about it, but what I will tell you is that we've had a lot of people already who've signed up. Yes, we have room. The church sits on almost 13 acres of land. We have space for you to hang out with us. It's gonna be amazing in every possible way, but it wouldn't be the same without you. I don't care if you just drive by, get a plate, honk your horn at us, tell us you love us and, and, and go. We want to see your face, okay? We want to be able to see our family. So would you do that? Come hang out with us. It's going to be an amazing time. Anybody is welcome to come. Now today we're going to be in Joshua chapter 3, and I'm excited about sharing the Word of God with you because we've been in a series called Forward. 
and we're going to look from chapter 3 today as to exactly how we're going to move forward. The Lord's already told us what to do, but now we're going to, and he, we've seen the significance of strategy, but today, today we're going to make some movement happen, and I'm excited about the word of God. Would you give? Consider being a blessing to the ministry. The prompts will be on the screen. You also have opportunity to make a spiritual decision, but right now we're getting ready to go into worship. Can I pray with you just before we do? Lord, today we've come to exalt and lift your name whether we are in this building or whether we are at home or wherever we find ourselves, we call it holy ground. We say, Lord, have your way today and bless us in the way only you can. We open up our hearts. We're ready to receive. Lord, do a miracle for somebody today. And if that somebody is nobody else, let it be me. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the place of change. Well, praise the Lord, Shekinah Kingdom Church. Hallelujah. Is anybody excited to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Come on, if you're excited, can you show some sign right here? Can you open up your mouth? If you're in the room, can you stand to your feet if possible? And can we give God the best that we have this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and tell God thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your keeping power, your sustaining power. We say thank you this morning and we give you glory. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Open up your mouth and clap your hands. Hallelujah. I believe God's glory is coming in the room today. And Holy Spirit, we are ready for what you're going to do. So we bless you in advance for the miracle signs and wonders. We praise you in advance for the glory that shall be revealed. We praise you in advance for your healing and your deliverance. We praise you in advance. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We want your glory to rise. Is that anybody's testimony? Hallelujah. Come on, do you want his glory? Hallelujah. Do me a favor, clap your hands all over the room. And we're gonna bless the name of our God this morning. We want your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. We exalt the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. We all know it. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. people that really want the glory to cry out oh. come on come on and lift your voice and say come on we want the glory of the Lord this morning hey one more time let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the glory of the Lord, rise the glory of the Lord rise let the praises of
is going to do something amazing today but he wants to hear the cries of his people can you open up your mouth and give the Lord glory hey. we're reaching out for you Jesus hallelujah can you invite him in we're reaching out for you Jesus come on if you're really hungry for him can you invite him to turn this place around today. Do what you want to do, Lord Jesus. Miracle signs and wonders. We're calling for your glory. Your delivering power. We're calling for your glory this morning. Your presence is so precious to us, Lord. And we count it a privilege to be in your presence. So we bow and we worship you. Hallelujah. We bow and we worship you. Woo, we give you glory this morning. Oh, the glory of your presence. We are temple. We give you reverence. So arise from your rest and be blessed. By our praise as we glory, yes, Lord, in your embrace, and as your presence, it now fills this place. In your own way, can you embrace the presence of God? Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name, Jesus. Come on, invade our space, Holy Spirit. 
do divine surgery today, God, in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, let your weight overtake and fill this place. Is that anybody's cry? Let your weight overtake and fill this place. We need your glory. Let your weight overtake, fill this place. Oh, let your weight overtake, fill this place. Can y'all help me? Come on, one voice. Let your weight, can you catch that in your spirit? Fill this place. Come on, if you're really calling out for him, let him know. Let your, that you want this weight to overtake and fill this place. Let your weight overtake. Turn this place around, let your way fill this place. Now if you really want the glory of God, can you lift your hands? Hallelujah, I believe God's glory is coming. And we're hungry for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, can you open up your mouth right here? And let's fill this space with worship. Come on. Yes, Lord. Come on, cry out for him in this moment. Here I am once again Desperate for your reveal Standing still We are yielded to this moment overwhelmed Like a fire in your presence Come on, does anybody want the glory of God? Yeah. Come on, lift your hands and tell the Lord, here I am once again. Here I am once again. Lord, we're desperate for your reveal. And we promise we won't move. We are standing We're guilty. a promise yeah this is what his glory does I'll break away every chain yes, Lord. and burn away every stronghold this is what he says I'll wipe away all your shame and I'll give you new life so receive Receive new life. Come on, I'll break away. I'll break away every Is anybody day. excited for the promises of God? He promised Never to burn. Anybody need new life? Say, I'll give you new life. So receive new life. You ought to lift your hands. I'll give you. Now, right here, I tell you to cry out for it. We're hungry. Come on, let's sound the alarm in this place. Come on, can you sound the alarm in this place? Hallelujah. We want the fire of God. Come on, sing up. Come on, make this your war cry to this morning. Come on, we're stirring up the atmosphere. Let 
your weight overtake fill this place hey you gotta lift your hands and declare let your weight hey overtake fill this place come on y'all got it let your weight overtake fill this place come on if you're really crying out come on let them know overtake fill this place y'all got it help us let your weight We need your glory. Let Let your overtake overtake. fill this place. place. Come on. Let your way overtake Overtake. fill this place. place. We're calling out for you. Let your way way. overtake Overtake. fill this place. place. Come on. Can you call out? Let your way. Upon us now. Come on, lift your hands and receive. Let go away. Let the weight of God fall fresh on us today. Oh, let it overtake. We need your glory to do divine surgery this morning, Lord. Overtake. We're calling out for your glory. Everybody say, fill this place. We need your glory. We need your fire. We need your power. Fill this place. We call out for you. We're crying out for you. Come on, fill this place. We're hungry for you. We're thirsty for you. We need the fire of God to. Come on, if you need the fire of God, help us lift the wall cry. Come on, open up your mouth and say, Feel something brewing in here. Oh, 
let joy overtake, fill this place. Now, can you praise God for what he's going to do? Oh, come on, open up your mouth. I believe God is going to meet us right where we are. And I believe God's glory, hey, God's glory is already here. And because he's here, we open up our mouths and we esteem your name. We open up our mouths and we shabak our Savior and we give God glory. Hallelujah. Those who are able to stand in the room, stand for a moment, if you're able. Those of you online, if you're able to concentrate for a moment. The Holy Spirit spoke to me moments ago as the team sang a song that really is a request to God. It's we're asking the weight the glory of the Lord translates into that. It is the weight of God. And uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and, and he said, he said, glory isn't something you ask for. It's something you pursue. And the spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, son, a whole lot of churches have mistaken my presence for my glory. So we come in and we worship a little bit. We sing, we clap, and we say, ooh, the glory of God is here. Let me, let me help you. The glory of God does not show up in most churches most Sundays. It just doesn't. You say, Rev, how do you know? Because we leave the way we came. If I were to sit something on you, and this is why I told you stand, because if I were to sit a heavy weight on you, you wouldn't be able to stand with it. Right? I don't look like it, but I do bench press a little bit. And, and when, when I take on heavy weight, the weight, I don't get to tell the weight where to go. That's why I have to have a spotter because I'm not in control because as I keep adding weight, the weight takes over. Moses asked the Lord, show me your face. And God said, I, I won't show you my glory by showing you my face. He said, but that's what I want you to do. He said, go hide behind the rock. He says that I'm going to cause my goodness to pass by. He said, I'm not even going to send my glory yet. I'm going to just send my goodness. He says that when the weight of my goodness passes by you, he says, for just a moment, it's in the Bible, he says, I won't let you see my face, but I'll let you see my back. Because the Bible says no one can see God and live. And the reason why I felt compelled in this moment is because I think we're on to something, but we're not quite there yet. And the only missing element is pursuit. You can't casually pursue the glory of God. If we're going to really ask for God's glory, and here's the thing, we don't have to have God's glory today. I know that sounds weird, right? We could just have church. But if what we're saying today is that we want the glory of God to sit on us, then what I'm going to ask for a few moments, just a few quick moments, is that you put personality aside, that you put fatigue aside, that you put sickness aside, haters, situations, problems. I'm saying for those of you in virtual space, and what you're saying is that you want the weight of glory. Put the coffee down. Put the baby back in the crib for a moment. Change your posture from just sitting up in the bed because you don't get glory on your terms. <laughs> 
You don't get glory on your terms. You don't get glory on your terms. And I want us for just a moment. I'm not going to beg and plead and pry and pump. I'm not trying to get churchy. But I want, if you really want the glory of God for everything in this room, mask, no mask, whatever your posture is, standing, sitting, I want you to lift a hand up in there and I want you to open your mouth and I want a sound of glory to fill this room. You say, I don't know what to say. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Lord, I love you when I bless you and I worship you and I give you glory and I give you praise. No praise team can do this for me. No preacher can do this for me. Nobody else can do this for me. With my mouth, I bless you. With, with my hands, I, I raise to give you glory. With, with my spirit, out of my belly, it's just a Out of my belly, 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 out of my, belly, out of my own belly, out of my own. You redeemed me. You saved me. You washed me in the blood. Hallelujah. So I come into your presence. I ask for your glory. Sit on us. Sit on me. Sit on me till I lose control. Sit on me till I'm not in control. Sit on me until my agenda is thrown out the window. Sit on me until the hell of the week that I had has now been dissipated from my mind. And all I see is the Lord high and lifted up. And your train fills the temple with glory. Sit on me. Right in my house, right in my living room, right in my bedroom, right in the car. Sit on me till my agenda has to walk away. Sit on me. Lord, the easiest way for me to get your glory is for me to give you my glory. So like that woman with that alabaster box, I take what's expensive to me and I break it before you and I lay it at your feet and I give it to you today. Day. I take what means something to me and I lay it before you. Have your way in my life. Let your weight fill my space. Somebody online just ought to type it glory, 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 glory. It's both a praise and a request. Glory, 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 glory. It's adoration and it's a prayer. Glory, 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 glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy is the Lord. You're holy. You're holy. You're holy. You're set apart. You're different. You're unlike any other. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy is the Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord. Somebody in pain, be healed. Be healed today. Be healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed right now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. 
Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Glory of the Lord in this place. Glory of the Lord in this place. I don't know why I hear that in my spirit. The Holy Spirit is just saying to me to tell somebody, you don't have this on your terms. I know the times have changed and I know that people are more and more in control of their lives and we do what we want to do and we simply don't do what we don't want to do. But there's no substitution for the pursuit of God. You won't be able to get God on sale. Hey! Shabbat you can't find God on Amazon. You can't find the glory on eBay. God said there's some things that you got to do it my way. You got to do it my way. Hey! You got to do it my way. You got to do it my way. But if you do it my way, God said I will change your life. Woo! I don't know. That's for somebody online this morning. I hear that in my spirit. I don't know what obstacle you're up against or what thing you stand in need of, but God is showing you the way you got to do it, but you want to do it your way. The Holy Spirit is saying to you today, maybe this is your sermon. The Lord is saying, you got to do it my way. You can't do the wrong thing and reap the right thing. God says you can't even do the right thing the wrong way. You got to do it my way. And if you pursue, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Somebody give God a great praise in this place and magnify him. Glory. Hallelujah. If you're glad to be alive, come on, clap those hands and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Be seated. I'm going to the word of God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel better than I was when I came already. That's the beauty of being in, in the presence of the Lord. Now, we are in hybrid worship, and I recognize that. And I want to say that. I can't reiterate that enough, that we are in hybrid space. And so there are worshipers in the room, yes, but there are worshipers online through various platforms that we have as well. And we see you this morning, and we greet you too in the name of Jesus. You worship at your convenience. Don't let other people give peer pressure on you to do one thing or another, okay? If you're in virtual space, don't let a person who's coming in the building make you feel like you child, you're not a part of the ministry. You need to come to church. On the same token, if you're in the building, don't let somebody who wanted to stay in virtual space tell you you were crazy for being here. Amen. The same Jesus that's in the room is in your room if you let him. Thank you, Lord. I'm just grateful. Now, I want to say this quickly. I'm going right to the word of God. Uh, next Sunday, we're virtual for the last time, prayerfully. And then beginning the first Sunday in August, we will do two services. Now, here's the truth. I'm really trying to work my way toward getting rid of registration because I know the registration has its headaches. Our main concern for keeping the registration has been we don't want to turn away people at the door. Because if we don't have registration, it's first come, first serve. And then I don't want anybody who comes, particularly guests who may come, who don't know how we flow, and they're turned away. So for now, we're going to keep the registration. Maybe just another month or two or so, I don't know. We'll see how it flows, okay? But we'll let you know. However, beginning in August, we're going to have two services every Sunday. Everybody say two services. So that means if you show up at 10 o'clock, you're going to get in the middle of a service because our services are gonna be at 9.30 and 11.30. The sole purpose is to make more room for worshipers who desire to worship in person, amen? And so we're gonna have the same service two times every Sunday. Uh, I will be ministering the 
worship team will be ministering. Our volunteers are volunteering to do it twice a day. We're going to accommodate you. Right now, what we're looking at is to also stream both services. So those of you in virtual space, you can choose. You can you can get on at 930 or you can sleep in and get on at 1130 or you can just hang out all day. Doesn't make us a difference, but you will have that opportunity. Now, the final thing I want to say is that we will be having a moment of fellowship. Our block party is taking steam the first Sunday in August. This is our way of just celebrating that we are opening our doors again, okay? And so the tickets are free, but we ask you to register. Yes, there are tickets left, though there have been many tickets that have gone. We just want to know how many people to prepare food for. Now, let me say this. We're still wearing masks here for now, all right? And so I'm going to ask you, if you're in worship with us, to wear your masks for now. There will come a time when we will be more um, aligned with the government mandate. Okay, but for now, because of the Delta variant, uh, excuse me, a variant that is out, we want to try to be as careful as we can. Okay, so that's what I have asked. That's what our staff is going to enforce that when we worship in house, that we do wear our masks for now. We want to do our best to make sure that we keep the room as safe and sanitized as possible. We're going to ask you invert in the present space. Please be nice to my volunteers. They're just trying to help us. They're trying to do our best to help us so we don't have to go back to me preaching to empty chairs and you having to watch me on TV. Amen. And so that's what we're asking for. If we can be disciplined with this, then we'll lift the mass restriction. We'll lift the registrations. We'll try to get back as close to normal as possible. But I'm encouraging you, even in your own space, just be careful. The virus is not gone. I know I've heard a lot about we're in a post-pandemic. We're in a pandemic. We're in a pandemic. I know I just killed the glory right there. But the numbers are rising because your cousins and them don't know how to act. It got hot, we put on bathing suits, we got free. And uh, so <laughs> let's, let's do our part to try to get on the other side of this. I promise y'all, as soon as we can get closer to the other side of this, I'm gonna have a mask burning service like we burning a mortgage. <laughs> and we gonna take these things and set them on fire. But in the meantime, I'll be honest, even inconvenienced to me, this is still better than when we had to worship disconnected from home without any ability to gather. I miss y'all. I just miss you. So thank you for your diligence. Thank you for being, uh, even those of you who've had to call in for registrations and things like that, we got your messages, we adjusted. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know because we've been able to redistribute some seats based upon available seats at the last minute. So thank you. I just appreciate when y'all comply, I'm telling you, y'all be having my back. It just makes me so proud to serve because you make it easy to serve you. Amen. All right, let's go to the Word of God. I got a word from God today. I want to I wanna minister to you um, out of the book of Joshua. We've been in Joshua now a couple of weeks, and each week I'm just, until we get done with it, each week I'm just walking a chapter at a time, sharing uh, from the thing forward. Sister Janae, the youth event, the it's today at five o'clock right we were supposed to do the trampoline park and they had an issue at the park and shut us down so we had to reschedule that's today i think they already had it on the screens at defy at five so those of you in virtual space bring your kids your your teams whatever age they are and uh come have some fun with us uh in safe space Joshua 3, I want to read 1 through 5 and then 14 through 17. I apologize for the lengthy reading. And I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible because I like the way it sounds. Joshua chapter 3, 
verses 1 through 5, and then I'm going to lift verses 14 through uh, 17, I believe, maybe 16. We'll see. <laughs> Listen to these words as Eugene Peterson says it. Joshua was up early and on his way from uh, Shittim with all of the people of Israel with him. He arrived at the Jordan and camped before crossing over. After three days, leaders went through the camp and gave out orders to the people. When you see the covenant chest of God, that's the Ark of the Covenant, your God carried by the Levitical priests, start moving. Follow it. Make sure you keep a proper distance between you and it, about half a mile. Be sure now to keep your distance and you'll see clearly the route to take. You've never been on this road before. That's the most important part of this whole text. Are those words right there. You've never been on this road before. Then Joshua addressed the people, sanctify yourselves. Tomorrow, God will work miracle wonders among you. Verse 14. And that's what happened. People left their tents to cross the Jordan, led by the priest carrying the chest of the covenant. When the priest got to the Jordan and their feet touched the water at the edge, the Jordan overflows its banks throughout the harvest. The flow of water stopped. It piled up in a heap a long way off at Adam, which is near uh, Zarathan. The river went dry all the way down to the um, Arabah Sea, which is the Salt Sea. And the people crossed facing Jericho. And there they stood, those priests carrying the chest of the covenant, stood firmly planted on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while all of Israel crossed on dry ground. Finally, the whole nation was across the Jordan and not one wet foot. Can you say amen? Lord, I pray today that these moments we share together in your word will be impactful for someone who needs to hear it. Hide indeed your servant behind the cross that people may not hear me but hear you, may not see me but see you. Thank you today for what I believe you're going to say to us in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to look at uh, what was verse 4 before. He says, you've never been on this road before. And I want to talk today using as a subject, nobody told me the road would be easy. Nobody told me the road would be easy. Joshua 3 is about moving from preparation to progress. It's very simple. Joshua 3 is about moving from preparation to progress. In Joshua 1, God speaks to Joshua, tells him, Moses, my servant is dead. I want you to arise and go over the Jordan. Joshua then commands the people, as the Lord has promised him, that as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. In Joshua chapter 2, they have spies that they've sent into the land. And I talked about that last week. And how the Lord will put people in your life according to God's divine strategy. But now it's time to shift from saying it to doing it. I have learned, my brothers and sisters, that there is one thing to be about to do something. And it's a different thing to actually do it. Have you ever met people who every time you talk to them, they're always about to do? I'm going to get kind of country for a minute. I'm going back. They fit in to do. And by the time you talk to them again, they're about to do. And then you see them in two years and they're about to do. And then finally you ask them, did you ever do it? And they say, no, child, but I'm, I'm, I'm fitting to do something else. What I've learned is that hope deferred makes the heart sick. That eventually you have to shift from getting ready to do something to actually doing it. Somebody shall do it. 
I don't know who needs that word today, and I don't know who needs that confirmation, but for somebody who is connected to us this weekend, your word from God is simply do it. You have come up with plans. You've got enough journals. You have written down enough um, concepts. You have, you have weighed out every option. You have looked at every possible tentacle of this idea, and the only thing missing from your life is just to do it. I have learned that you can be sitting around planning to do something for years, and somebody else can have less plans, but take Take action and will end up passing you along the road. You be mad at them because they succeeding at your idea. But it's because the Bible never said that God would just bless the plan. The Bible says whatsoever you do shall prosper. God says I bless your actions and if you would do it then you can have it. I'm drawn, however, to the specificity in this text because even though it is time for them to do it, God is careful and clear about how they are to cross over. It's finally time to move forward, but God is careful and clear about how they are to cross over. God tells them when you get down to Shittim at Acacia Grove, right there at the banks of the river, chill out for three days. Isn't that frustrating? The idea of getting that close to the change and God makes you wait. They camp out for three days, but this is why. They camp out for the three days because the Lord wants them to hear careful commands. His command is that I want the priest and the Levites to get out ahead of you. For the priest to bear the Ark of the Covenant and for them to walk on ahead of you, he said, put a distance between you and them, about half a mile, so that you will know which way you are to go. And he does this because you have never been on this road before. I want you to get that phrase in your spirit today because if that is all you hear, I have said enough. I'm telling you that God has you on a path for which you have never been on before. In some way, shape, or form, whether you were young or whether you are not so young anymore, God's word to you is you have not been this way before. If nothing else, I know this much, none of us have been alive in a pandemic. I know we've had to navigate hardship before. I know that we've had to go through trials before. But resetting life after having been shut down for so long a time, we have never been this way before. For Israel, they spent 400 years in Egypt, 40 years in a wilderness. For us, we have spent more than 400 days isolated from the rest of the world and normalcy as we knew it. And here God is giving us a chance to now cross over into new territory and yet God's word for you is you have never been on this road before my brothers and sisters progress is tricky here's why because we by nature are wired around patterns how many of you who drove here today drove here today the way you always take to get here by nature you're gonna probably go home the way you always go home my father told me as a child, he said, son, uh, just one thing my dad taught me, always know more than one way to get to where you're going. <laughs> That's old school wisdom right there. But the point is because it's possible that you can have a route you're used to taking, but that route not work for you. Now let me pull it from geography and put it in a psychological and a social context. I want to suggest being defensive might not work for you in this season me warm up I want to suggest that 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 throwing up the wall so that you don't let people see your vulnerabilities and not being able to show your weakness because you want everybody to know how strong you are might not work for you in this season that what God is saying is you have never been on this road before some of us could have what we need if we would ask but we're not used to asking because God called us to be the lender and not the borrower right except the fact that everything Jesus ever used he borrowed When the crowd needed to be fed and Jesus needed to feed them, he borrowed some bread and some loaves. When Jesus needed a place to rest his head, he'd go over to Mary and Martha's house and borrow a sofa. When Jesus died and needed to be buried, he borrowed a tomb and... Oh, shut up. 
And what I'm trying to tell you is that maybe the key to what God has next for your life is understanding that the way you're used to doing it might not work at this point. Which means that the path ahead of you is a disruption of what you have grown accustomed to. I love when Bishop Jake says this. He says, if you can't handle disruption, stop praying for change. Preach, Bishop. He said, if you can't handle disruption, then stop praying for change. What God is saying is that if you're praying for me to do something new, then you're going to have to do you got it something new if you want to see me manifest something fresh then you're gonna have to do something fresh don't keep praying for change but you don't want a disruption of that in which has always existed it means that I can't just assume that the way God has done it last time is the way God will do it this time I stood in this pulpit, oh, maybe two years ago now, and I began to prophesy to our church that God was releasing a divine disruption. And I don't know if the church remembers that, but I talked about the fact that God was not merely giving an interruption, but that God was going to disrupt what we considered normal. Now that I think about it, I had no clue what was even coming out of my mouth. That God was going to disrupt what we considered to be normal so that God could release a new dimension of God's plan in the earth. I told you two weeks ago that crisis accelerates change. So God says when I need to bring about a change then I will allow a crisis to occur by which I create a disruption in the earth or at least in your world so that you will then do something that otherwise you would not have done make it plain Rouse and bring the fruit lower so God's trying to push you away from a job so that you could pursue something different but you're so tethered to that paycheck that God says the only way to get you to move out is for me then to allow crisis on the job chaos with the boss situation with your paycheck to then accelerate a decision I allow disruption to your normal because I knew that if you had to survive, you would then make the hard decisions that if you were left in comfortable space, you would have never made. Okay, that, that wasn't good enough. Let me try it again, uh, Deacon Don. Let's come another way. God says, I did not design for that relationship to hold you captive. But you're so nice, you've mistaken love for loyalty. So the only way I can get you to feel comfortable moving on is to disrupt the situation. So I let them betray you. Because if they didn't betray you, then you would not have felt the strength and the grace to move on with your life. So God says I created a disruption and allowed things to occur a certain way so that you would become open to something different than where you are. What I'm trying to say to you today is that God has a way of creating change by means of disruption and don't pray for the change if you're not willing to accept the disruption. Is there anybody here this morning who can testify whether in the house or whether by virtual space that I have had some disruptions in my life lately? There's some things that have just been turned upside down. That everything is not the way that it was a year ago. That I have had to embrace the fact that some things I just could not control and would not change on my own. But the Lord has brought them about. It is a sign that God is taking you somewhere. And I know I'm getting ready to ask for a hard thing. But I want everybody who's been up under pressure, lift your hands and tell God thank you. Because it's your passport into the next dimension of your life. Let me go deeper with this. This is not the first time that Israel has crossed a body of water. It's not the first time that Israel has crossed over. We know more famously Moses and the Red Sea. But what we find with this crossing of the Jordan is that even though it's not the first time, what we do note is that it's not like the last time. 
What do you mean? Unlike the Red Sea, God this time provided no path for easy passage ahead of time. With the Red Sea, Moses gets the benefit of holding up his rod, and when he holds up the staff, the waters part. And a sea that was normally capable of drowning them, now the waters have congealed. Literally, that's what it means. It congealed like jello. The waters of the Red Sea congealed, and the people had the pleasure of stepping into dry ground. Here's the problem. No staff. No Moses. Lord, help me today. No water moving. No jello. No frozen context. No evidence from where I stand that if I step into this, it's going to move. Oh, I'm working on something. Somebody told me set it up. Oh, I'm about to set this thing up and I'm going to slam dunk this today. God will bring you, and see, this is what's so crazy about it, because all they know, their reference point, their fathers and mothers went through the Red Sea. All we know is when we get to the water, God is going to trouble God's going to move water out of our way and yet God is telling them in advance no I'm not oh Lord I know how this works the moment I need you to provide something then, 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 then this is normally how you come through God I ain't got no question because I already know you whoever I need you to be you the I am you are I already know soon as I get to this door here it is by the time I lose one job it's because you already got the other job lined up not this time I'm not going to give you the benefit of tendering a resignation or walking out of that company because you have an offer on the table. Y'all see where I'm trying to take this today? God is telling them, I got to hasten, God is telling them that this time I'm not going to give you the benefit of a provided path ahead of time. Josephus, the historian, states this, that Joshua had fear about passing over the Jordan. Why? For the river carried with it strong currents and they had no bridge to get across so I have no staff I have no Moses and I have no bridge which means either way you slice it the road is hard the destiny is sure but the road is hard and I rose to my feet today I'm so glad I got y'all attention y'all drawn right on in too I can feel your energy I rose to my feet today both in sanctuary and in cyberspace to tell you here's your sermon just because the promise is yours doesn't mean the road is easy Just because the promise is yours does not mean the road is easy. This is a word for people who can admit that the next thing is a hard thing. That I am now faced to try to figure out, am I going to soar at this or am I going to drown in this? And God won't tell me what exactly is going to happen ahead of time. I don't see tangible evidence of how my next move is going to work out in my favor. All I have from God is a promise that the Lord is going to give me the grace to get to the promised land God has, but everything else in my path is still standing by me. And here's the funny part about a river. A river is living water. It's moving water. We not even talking about water standing still we talking about water that that's why I say current because it literally could take me up and take me out of here and what if I am one hard decision away from everything else and God's response to you and me today is simply I never told you the road 
would be easy. You were planning your wedding, but I was trying to prep you for your marriage. I never told you the road would be easy. You, you were planning how the optics were going to look and how you shout over that house you bought, but, but I never told you that you were going to have the house and not have to make the repairs to the house or that you would never have problems once you moved in that house or that you never have struggles. I know this is a hard word. Nobody wants to shout with me today. I'm cool with that. Shout right by myself. I'm telling you, God never told me. Tell me where the Lord showed us that it was going to be easy. God said, I never told you that the road would be easy. This is what separates the real disciples from those who act like their disciples because the people who act like their disciples take Jesus as a drug to numb them from the pain of reality. So we like shouting our way out of responsibility and this is why we like playing lotteries with the presence of the Lord. If you spin around and dance three times for a hundred of you who will shout, for somebody who will run back and forth, come do suicides down the aisle and the Lord says that by this time next week, can I tell you something? You can run and shout and sow and dance if you want to but by this time next week you're gonna be in the same spot you were in this time last week preach up in here Cedric Darnell you're gonna be in the same space you were in this time last week if you don't move I know you can't high five nobody you ain't got to worry about that I will never ask you from that again but I dare you just point at somebody and tell them move move that's your word. It's not going to get easy before you do it. No, the mothers can't lay hands before you do it. No, we're not going to be able to get you in a prayer circle and put you in the boxing ring so you can wobble back and forth before you do it. You know what God told you to do. You know what God put on your heart. You know how hard hell has been fighting you. And God said the thing separating you from the promise I have for you is a decision, not a dance. We can cut the click track on and we can let all the little boys flip flop around and do their stage shout. But when you get finished wobbling, you still got to make a decision. I'm sorry, y'all, because I came today to preach. I made up in my mind if the Lord let me survive this week that I was going to slay a demon. So I'm going to preach like I've been preaching for a year with nobody in the seats. I'm so sick of the enemy deceiving us into making us think that we can play some magic trick with the kingdom and everything is just supposed to happen. And now everybody's depressed and mad at God for something God never promised. I never said. I'm going to get in trouble right here. Sister Shane, you praying for me? Ten years of pastoring, I've seen it. I've been there. I get it. I understand anger. I understand grief. But you have people mad with God because their mother died. But I have one question. Can you show me any mother in the history of the earth who's lived always? I'm not being insensitive. Please, please hear my heart. I'm just showing us how sometimes life situations desensitize us, Kev, from the truth that in this world you should have tribulation. He says, but know that I have overcome the world. He says, man born of a woman has few days and that full of trouble. Maybe God won't let life here be so, 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 so great because God doesn't want to desensitize us to the reality of the life after this. I'm not saying that God is a manipulator playing with the times. No, but what I'm telling you is that even your best day on earth cannot compare to what would be your worst day in heaven. And God says that, that what I'm trying to do is show you how to walk in power and dominion here. Let me bring the fruit down real quick. I'm going to get back to my notes, but I feel some stirring up in my belly because maybe my assignment today is to help deliver somebody from the lie that the enemy has told you. Not everybody in your life is going to love you the same. Not everybody in your life is going to treat you the same. I read this somewhere. They said, stop looking for you in everybody else. You are not going to find yourself in other people. 
And when we get mad and disappointed, we always say, see, but I was there for them and I was there and see if this was me, I would have, I would have, and that's the problem. You would have, but they didn't. And at some point you have to accept it. Can I give you more? They might not even say sorry. They may not come back and apologize. They may not get it right, but it doesn't mean you've got to be stuck. God said, you've got a Jordan to cross. Moses is buried in a mountain that I won't even show you. But today you got my show. I text that cut no. Today, you have the opportunity to choose life. And if you choose life, you can live. You can live. You can live. I'm here today because the last 400 days and the last 16 months have put some of us in a stupor of depression because we're so disappointed about how life has happened. And I feel you, boo. But God said today, I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. And I give you the ability to choose life I want everybody who's going to live because you made a decision to live holler at your boy right now I made up in my mind I'm just going to live I made up in my mind I've come too far to only come this far I made up in my mind that if there is a promised land on the other side of this water then get me some swimming trunks because if I've got to I'm going to swim my way to it but I refuse to spend the rest of my life stuck here ah yeah 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 you might be 60 you may be 70 you may be 80 but if you are alive today you're alive because there's more one way I'm, I'm done he, 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 here's what God God told me tell those of you who can accept that the road may not be easy well then Lord how do I navigate he can add how do I navigate a road that's not easy here's the answer your movement releases your miracle Did you hear what I said? Your, your movement releases your miracle. So Joshua addressed the people and told them, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will work miracle wonders among you. And that's what happened. The people left their tents to cross over the priest bearing the ark and when the priest got to the Jordan, their feet touched the water. And because it was the harvest time, the banks were overflowing, so you got extra water. <laughs> but when their, feet, when their feet touched the water and they started walking into it, prepared to swim in it, the water stopped. No movement, no miracle. You call me Deacon Hall? No, no movement, no it, it wasn't until, see this unlike Moses. Moses got to hold his rod. No, 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 not this time. Th this time is only when they stepped in it, not knowing how it was going to turn out, other than the word of God that then I feel something in my spirit, man. I, I wanna shout. It, 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 it's when they stepped in it that it moved and all of a sudden, then the water stood still. They, they went in fearful, but faithful. I'm, I'm fearful, but I'm faithful. I'm scared, but I'm going. 
I don't know how it's gonna work, but all of my appointed days, I'm gonna wait till my changes come. I can't predict exactly how things are going to turn, but I won't let my lack of control over this situation make me stay still when God said move. I'm stepping. I was looking for a witness and I found a witness in the oddest place, very odd place. Albert Einstein became my witness because Albert Einstein puts it this way. He says nothing happens until something moves. Even in science, nothing happens till something moves. Even in, in your home, nothing happens till something moves. Even with your business, nothing happens till something moves. Even as it relates to your calling, nothing happens until something moves. But if you would dare to move, if my mama who's gone on to be with the Lord were here, she'd get kind of gettified with it. And she would say, if you bust a move. I never knew what that meant. If you bust a move, God says, then I will begin to move. If you move, I move. God says, when you move, I move just like that. God says, if you would make the first step, I know you want me to make the first step. I'm not going to give you the job you didn't apply for. If you move, I move just like that. I'm not going to bless you with a promotion that you didn't go after because you were afraid. God says, if you move, then I'll move just like that. And I preach this today and I'm almost done because going forward does require a miracle recognize that I understand that that there's no way we can get to the promised land they don't have cruise ships they don't have airlines they don't have the ability to take people across the sea at this point they are stuck with water between them and the promise and so I know that there is a miracle in need but God says that the miracle is activated by movement God says unfortunately I'm not going to secure your emotionality before you commit to the journey but if you will move then I will bless you and the more you move the more the waters will the more you move the more the challenge will I think you get my point don't you I could close my book up and go home the more you move the more it moves right out of your way until the Bible said as Eugene Peterson put it that when they finally crossed over catch this for those of you who will shout it said they crossed over with not one wet foot wait not one wet foot but mother the bible told me that the priest stuck their foot in the water and got wet which means for those of you who catch this revelation god says that if you're willing to move out by faith i'll dry up what you thought was going to drown you Okay, they need some music put to that. So let me make my voice a little, <clears throat> a little musical. God says that if you move, I'll dry up what was drowning you. God says even the part of you that did get wet will dry up. I'm not promising that you won't get sick, but I'll heal it. I'm not promising that you won't get lonely, but I'll be there. I'm not promising that you won't have trials, but I'll take care of you. I'm not promising that you won't have some issues. God said, but I will make right whatever was wrong in your life. I'm sorry, y'all. I've been teaching for about six, seven, eight, nine weeks. I'm ready to holler. God said that I will make right whatever was wrong in your life. This is why you need not cry over the wetness you had to deal with. Because if you're willing to get your foot wet, I'll try it. Hey, till everybody can cross over. Now, I only want to preach for my last six minutes to people who want to cross over. I only want to talk today to those of you who made up in your mind. I'm not going to stay in the wilderness another day. But that today and this season is my time to move forward in the promise of God. I want everybody who believes you're crossing over to look across at somebody else and just holler, not one wet foot. That's God's prophecy to your children. I know you're wondering if God's going to save your children before it's too late. God said not one wet foot. I know you're wondering, God, I don't want to see my child die in sin. I don't want to see my grandchildren not have a chance at grace. But God said that if you keep on praying and if you keep on believing me and even though it doesn't make sense right now I'll bring you out and it won't be one wet foot 
it. I know somebody here has been prepared to do a hard thing. But if you're willing to do the hard thing, God said, I'll make the hard thing easier and I'll kick in and do something that your eyes have not seen and your ears have not heard and it has not entered into the heart of man what God has in store for you. I want somebody who knows God's about to blow your mind. Clap your hands for 10 seconds and tell them thank you. Well, I close. Can I tell you what God told them? He told them what I leave you with. He said, sanctify yourself. I'm over my Facebook preaching time. He said, sanctify yourself for tomorrow. They miss, not next week. Tomorrow. Okay, let's back up. He said, sanctify yourself. It's not my job to sanctify you. God said, you got to get yourself ready for what I'm able to do in your life. Stop expecting everybody else to get you in place. This is how you know you're growing up. Uh, when you can check your own attitude. And nobody had to call your, your card when you get to the place that you can say, Lord, that was nasty. And that's not who you called me to be. And for where I'm headed, I can't be that hateful. I'm talking to those of you who've been looking in the mirror for the last few months. And you've been seeing your own brand of ugly. And saying, Lord, that ain't who you called me to be. I need to be not. Lord, help me get back in church. Because the devil didn't turn me into somebody mean. Oh, but for who God wants me to be, I've got to be sober minded. I dare you to just lift up your voice and shall sanctify yourself it means I'm making a decision see we have gotten so churchy Lord I'm over my time can I get a motion from the floor to preach about two more Pentecostal minutes can I declare to you that the problem in the body of Christ is that we've become so churchy that we've missed what words mean when he said sanctify yourself then what we think of wearing white and putting on skirts because for some reason we've made holiness all about what the women should do so we tell the women what they can't wear and tell the women how they can't talk and tell the women while the men are barely saved but that ain't what sanctification is I'm sorry he said sanctify yourself to be sanctified literally just means to be set apart so what God was telling them is I want you to separate yourself from everything that doesn't belong in your life once you cross over that river he said in other words once you get into the promise it's too late to try to sever the things that need to be severed if you're going to sever something sever it on this side God said, if you're going to separate yourself, do it while you're still broke. If you're going to sever yourself, do it while you're still at the bottom so that you don't have to worry about Negroes trying to drain you. Once you get into the promised land, somebody shall sanctify yourself. He said, if you say that explains why some of you have lost friends on this side of the river. It's because God's been challenging you to sanctify yourself. No, God's not going to blow it up. No, God's not going to let it blow up in your face at this stage in your life. Why should God have to create a calamity to get you to be obedient? Somebody shall sanctify yourself. Now, for those of you who made up in your mind, you're going to be sanctified. I dare you to just declare, I'm not doing this for nothing. Can I tell you why God is telling me to sanctify myself? We saw it in the text, but it's only for those of you who get it. He said, for tomorrow, God will do wonders among you. That word for wonders there is pala. It means that in which is beyond our ability. 
God said tomorrow I'm going to start doing stuff in your life that you couldn't do by yourself. We saw it play out already in the text that when they stuck their foot in the water, they can't make waters move, but God can. But if you would make the decision to get yourself ready for what God will do, then God will step in and make it happen. And I know you've been prepared. Stop preaching, Rousen, for God to have to walk you through a hard thing. But if you're willing to do the hard thing, God said, then I'll make it easy because I will do wonders. Somebody shout wonders. I'll do wonders among you. It means God says, I'll do what your eyes could not see. I'll do what wouldn't fit on your scoreboard. I'll do what didn't make sense because even though it's beyond your power, it's not beyond God's power. And do I have anybody here who can give God praise? on a Sunday morning here it is that the Lord has wonder working power I heard the old deacon say would you be free from the burden of sin there's power in the blood oh he said there is power power here it is wonder working power now, I'm done y'all I'm trying to sit down but you keep pushing me I'm trying to take my seat because I can't preach this long in 2021 but what I'm telling you is you've seen God's power but you getting ready to see God's wonder working power do I have a witness on Facebook Brother Derek, God said you've seen God's power, but you're getting ready to see wonder working power. Somebody ought to tweet it, wonder working power. It means God's going to work wonders in my life. God's going to do something that I could have never asked for. God's going to work wonder working power. I see miracles. I'm sorry, I'm going to shout by myself. I said, I see miracles that are coming to pass in your life because the God I serve specializes in wonder working power. The mother used to say, He's a wonder in my soul. Hey, He's a wonder in my soul and do I have anybody who can praise God with your pastor that God's about to work wonders tomorrow tomorrow he's gonna work wonders tomorrow he's gonna do good things on your behalf tomorrow God's gonna bring the high places down tomorrow God's gonna lift the low places up tomorrow I see wonders I see waters moving out of the way I see God doing miracles in your life I dare somebody who receives this word to give God praise When you get ready to explain yourself and people ask you how you doing and what's the Lord doing for you, you don't got to say much. Just tell them wonders. He's doing wonders. He's doing wonders. Can we praise him for doing wonders? Can we lift him up? They said I can't hoop no more in COVID. Can we praise God for doing wonders? I said he's a wonder in my soul. But can I give you a reason to shout, Joe? The greatest wonder was not getting them uh, through the Jordan, but on a hill called Calvary. He brought me out of darkness and in uh, to the marvelous light and somebody came to church this Sunday for the preacher to tell you God's going to do wonders nobody told me the road would be easy but nobody said the road was going to kill you either 
Nobody said the road would be easy, but nobody said you had to lose your mind. Nobody said the road would be easy, but nobody said you had to give up. The God I serve is more than able. I quit. Stand on your feet. five people and just shout wonders, wonders, wonders. I had more fun when I was preaching in the empty building. I said wonders. Can we praise him one more time? Like you believe he's going to do wonders in your life tomorrow. How you going to do that, Reverend Rousen? When the world seems to be turning on its hinges. And how you going to do that with, when I got to go back to the doctor to check this lump in my breast? And how am I going to believe in wonders when I'm still grieving my way every day? I'm going to tell you how you praise him. Believing in wonders. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving, how we bless the old Lord. Y'all come get me here. Bless the Lord. Hey, shout, oh my soul, and all that is within me. For somebody whose head's been down for 2021, minister, mother, preacher, prophet, God said, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Done. God said, sanctify yourself. Okay, let me make it plain. I'm, 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 I'm out. I'm on my time, man. It's whatever. Lord. I gotta set this straight, Kev. I, I, I have to make this right. The Lord is telling them to cross over and they just lost Moses. Lord, what do you do when you have a window of opportunity but you feel your heart's not ready for it? Have you ever had God open up opportunities but you're still wrestling with something and you feel on your account I'm not ready for that have you ever had a good thing at what seemed to be the wrong time and you're thinking Lord I'm not ready for that and God is saying yes you are You're more ready than you think. And the ready that you think you need to be, you'll never be. Everything I ever did, and I thought about this. I was saying this to myself. I said, Lord, I think I started pastoring at the wrong time. I'm 25. Been married three months. Taking over church, grieving its the loss of its leader just nothing about that made sense and the Holy Spirit asked me a very interesting question he said well you tell me what time would have been a good time he said because if I had waited till now then you'd be saying Lord I'm, I'm already I'm almost 35 I feel like I'm past age and God says because the conditions seem to never be perfect for your emotions that's why we don't live according to them 
The conditions are never right according to your emotions. And the conditions are nearly never wrong according to your faith. Cross over. Stick your foot in the Jordan and move. Don't keep wrestling with the same decision you know God already told you to make. But Lord, but Lord, but Lord, but Lord, but Lord, but Lord, what if, what if, what if, so what, so what, so what? You're going to gain some things. You're going to lose some things. You're going to gain some people. You're going to lose some people. No matter what move you make, somebody's going to be disappointed. Somebody's going to be blessed. None of it is the question. The question is, what did the Lord say to you? And if the Lord told you to make a move, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You make that move and you let God take care of the rest. From where you are, lift your hand one moment and I just want you to thank God. If the Lord said anything to you today that blessed and helped you, I just want you to thank the Lord for it. I want you to tell the Lord, Lord, I receive it and I, I accept what you said to me today. I receive. I receive. I receive. Somebody's watching online this morning. You need to lift your hand and declare, Lord, I receive. I receive. Nobody told me the road would be easy, but I don't believe you brought me this far. <laughs> to leave me. I don't believe you brought me this far. To leave me. I don't believe you brought me this far. I don't believe you brought me this far. I come too far to be by myself. Lord, for every lifted hand, I pray for them right now in Jesus' name that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would cover. I pray for every lifted hand right now that the Holy Spirit would cover them. Every decision that has to be made and every situation that stands in the way, Lord, every path I have to walk, every Jordan I have to cross, my lifted hand is a sign that I am in compliance with your will and it does not matter. It does not make a difference. It does not make a difference what I have to do. If you called me to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to move in that direction. This is my agreement to you and my covenant with you that I will not do this on my terms. I'm going to do this on your terms. And it may seem crazy, but I'm going to do it because you've called me to it. And I declare by faith that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. I decree and declare over my life better days are ahead. Hallelujah. I declare over my life better days are ahead. I declare over my life better days are ahead. I know it's been rough and the hills have been hard to climb. Glory to God, but better days are ahead. And I thank you now in advance that you're going to do something amazing with my life. And I give you praise for that. Arrest every wounded heart every heavy heart, every person grieving the losses of Moses in our lives and the things that we would have to leave behind us. I pray you give us the grace to do it, understanding, Lord, that as we continue to walk in your will, you will help our hearts. But I don't have to try to help myself by standing still. I will not be stuck. Nobody told me the road would be easy, but I've got to keep moving forward in the name of Jesus. Somebody who trusts God, give God any kind of praise you got right now. a few things quickly you be seated for a minute but I'll let you go those of you online you've been patient if you don't know the Lord as your savior today if you have not accepted the gift of salvation if you have not come into covenant relationship with God through Jesus do you understand that what I've preached in Joshua physically is what Christ did for us spiritually. Bought us out of the bondage of sin. 
through the wilderness of our own decisions. And us crossing that Jordan represents us moving from death to life through Jesus Christ. Give your life to the Lord today. This is your opportunity. If you're in the room and you want to give your life to the Lord or you want to rededicate your life to Christ, or if you want to become a part of our church, just lift your hand. I want to acknowledge you. I'll walk you through the next steps, but if you're here and you want to make a decision today for the kingdom, lift your hand. You need a church home, lift your hand. Glory to God. If you want to rededicate your life, lift your hand. Those of you online, if you're online with me, here's what we're all going to do. If you want to make a decision today for the kingdom of God, I want you to text me right now an SKC decision to number 71441. It's going to be on your screen. Text SKC decision to number 71441. 71441. Thank you, Jesus. We want to lead you in your next steps. We want to walk you into the promise of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I see you. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going to dismiss you. If you haven't had a chance to give, I didn't talk much about that before. Now I'm getting used to not even talking about money. Glory to God. We bring our tithe and our offering to the Lord. I want to challenge somebody today who didn't plan to give. I want to challenge somebody today who already tithed. But I felt this strong in my spirit, and I rarely flow this way. But I want somebody who can, everybody who can, to get as close as you can to a $40 offering. $40. Why 40 past? They spent 4 40 day, 40 years in a wilderness. They spent 400 years in, in slavery. We have spent 400 days. It's more than 400 days stuck in this catastrophe called COVID-19. But I believe by faith we're crossing into a new space. Stepping into a new era. And so above your tithe, above your tithe, I'm not touching your tithe. Your tithe is about you and God. But above the tithe, I'm challenging every viewer, every person who can to get the closest thing to $40 in your hand. And I want you to give it. You can text to give it. The information is going to be on the screen. If you're in the room, you still can give electronically. If you want to give in person, we have the receptacles uh, along the walls where you can take an envelope and put your seed or your offering or your tithe in. But I want you to do it. And when you do it, I want you to declare over your life, my wilderness is over. My wilderness is over. I'm coming out of that wilderness. I've been in the wilderness, but I'm coming out. I've been stuck in a place, but I'm coming out. I've been wandering around for 40 years in a place, symbolically. I've been dealing in the same cycles and circles forever, but I declare by faith that I'm coming out and I'm crossing over. And nobody told me the road was going to be easy, but I don't believe the Lord brought me this far to leave me here. I declare over my life that my time has come and that God's going to do something exceeding and abundantly and above all that I could ask or think. Glory to God. Those of you in the room, I'm going to stand and dismiss you. Those in the room can stand. I'm going to dismiss you. Those online, I can't tell if you're standing or sitting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just can't give up now. Oh, I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. Oh, but I don't believe he's promised to leave. Lord, as we leave this sacred space, we do so with this word on our mind. Lord, we do so ready to move forward. The waters ahead won't move if we don't stick our foot into it. So we make the calculated decision to move by faith, 
to trust your word, to do what you told us to do. And by faith, Lord, as we make the moves you have given us to make, waters are going to recede and they're going to move out of our way. And I thank you in advance because I know you're able to do that. Help us this week not to lean into fear, but to lean into faith. And I believe by faith that you're able to do wonders. Today we sanctify ourselves for tomorrow you will do wonders in my life. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forever. Let those who know the road isn't easy, but you're going to take that road anyway. Shout amen. Have a strong week. I love you. You are dismissed. Nobody told me the road would be easy. And I don't believe he's brought me this far. Wow. To leave me. Wow. What? I just can't and give amazing. up now. Amazing. <laughs> no. This is forward. Listen, I cannot encourage you enough to please, please, please share this word with everybody that you know. As a matter of fact, go get the whole series that's already taken place. Share that with your people too, y'all. This, this word just needs to be shared with absolutely everyone. Yeah. This series, everybody that you know can be uh, can can be pushed forward, y'all. We want to make sure that we want to take our entire squad with us forward. So please, please, yeah. please become a digital evangelist right now and share this word with everybody, your family, your friends, your coworkers, whoever it is that you can do. Please make sure you make that happen. We're going to get out of here. We're going to go take our Sunday naps. We're going to go get our dinner. We're going to get our lunch. We might go get our brunch. You just Later. never know. Listen, we're going to get Come out of here. Family, we love you. Love you so much. We cannot wait to see you yes. at the block party. At the block party. We can't, yes. we can't wait to see y'all. We got to go. We love you. Have a strong, you. strong, strong week. Bye. Love you.